So in talking about sampling, I, I, there's kind of three things that I want to pay attention to when I'm sampling. First is safety. Um, I want to make sure at Herrera, we do a lot of stormwater sampling. So a lot of times that's one o'clock in the morning on a Friday night. So you need to be, make sure you people know where you are. You've got, you've, you've got proper communication. You've got proper gear. So always, always, that's the first thing you want to think about is how am I going to stay safe? And a lot of times we're sampling rivers and you've got to make sure that you're not going to go into a situation where you're going to, you know, put your, put your life at risk. So rule number one, safety. Rule number two uh, is, getting a representative sample. We want to think about how am I going to collect this sample in such a way that I'm actually going to be measuring what's in this water, not some oddball outlier value that doesn't represent what I'm measuring. So I'm going to start this demonstration off by showing you what not to do, OK? So first off, I'm going to grab this bottle that I found next to my desk. This is what I use to water my plants every day. I go into the kitchen sink, and I grab this bottle and I use this to water my plants. So I'm going to take this bottle and I'm going to use this for, for sampling, okay? I'm going to put my cap right there and I'm going to dump out this water that I'm using to water my plants. I'm going to go down here to my creek and, oh, I just kind of kicked up some turbidity, but that's okay. And I'm getting some of these, like, weeds here and, all right, that's not quite good. So I'm going to dump that out, getting that, dumping that out. I'm going to do this again. And I think I got a decent sample. Look at it. Get my cap here. Cap it up. Perfect, right? This is a great sample. You're fired. I'm fired. Why am I fired? Stuck your my finger in it. Okay. What else did I do wrong? Stirred up the sediment. Okay. My bottle's contaminated. This bottle, guy, I've been using it to water my plants. I even put some plant food in here. Maybe not. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't check with the lab to see what type of bottle I needed. Okay. Uh, the cap I just threw on the ground. What about me? I am like one of the biggest sources of contamination that, that, for this sample. So I need to protect this sample from me. Okay. No gloves. I was breathing in the sample when I was looking to see that I had gotten enough milfoil in there after messing up the actual in-water sampling. So. Really, what you're looking at is two things. Did I protect the sample from me? Did I actually get the sample out of the receiving water in such a way that I'm, oh, I'm, I'm measuring the things I care about? I didn't do any of that, OK? So let's start all over. I messed this up. How can I do this correctly, OK? Well, first of all, I'm going to use proper technique to protect the sample from me. I need to glove up. Well, even before I glove up, a lot of times, one of the things I want to do is make sure that the other part of this is safety, representative, but also sample documentation, OK? I need to let the laboratory know exactly where the sample came from, who collected it, what I want analyzed. And so you got to be careful when you've got a wet sample on a wet label that you're sh shipping off to the, to the lab, and you're throwing that into a cooler with a bunch of other samples, because your samples might end up in the lab with no labels on it, and that doesn't do anybody any good. So a lot of times what I'll do is before I do anything is I will write my site location, the date and time of my sample, what I want analyzed, my name, and then I'll put a piece of clear plastic tape over the top of that so that when I get my sample to the lab, that, lab, that, lab, that label's still there, okay? So just be really conscious about how you label your samples, how you document where it came from. You want to make sure the lab knows what to do with it when you got there, and all that has to be done in such a way that once you get it wet, you don't lose all that. OK? So now I'm going to actually put my glove on. So when you're looking at this water, I'm seeing all this stuff floating on the top. OK? And I'm trying to just character, let's say I'm just trying to characterize maybe a, a, a nutrient levels in this. I want to sample this, this receiving water where I'm going to get the most representative sample. So does that mean the top, or is it the bottom, or is that in the water column? In this situation, I think it's the water column, OK? What if I'm sampling something like total petroleum hydrocarbons? That's a situation where that pollutant actually will float on the surface of the, well, of the water. And so in that case, my sampling technique might be to skim the surface of the water so I make sure I get that pollutant. So depending on your parameter, you might be sampling 
at different locations in the water column. But in most cases, you're going to want to go about mid-depth, okay? And you're going to want to rinse that bottle with the water you're using so that you get any, any kind of cross-contamination out of the bottle. You only want to have your receiving water in the bottle with one exception. Who can tell me what the exception is to that rule? A preservative in the bottle. So sometimes you'll get a, uh, depending on the analyte, you'll have a preservative in the bottle and you don't want to do your three rinses when you've got a preservative. Okay? The gloves, gloves are hard to get on. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my clean bottle that I got from the lab. We'll say it doesn't have preservative. So I'm going to approach the receiving water very carefully. I don't want to kick up any sediment when I'm getting near the water. Okay? I'm going to immerse the bottle. I'm going to put my cap in a safe, clean place. And I'm going to immerse to about mid-depth. I'm going to dump somewhere where I'm not going to contaminate where I'm sampling. My three rinses. And get my actual sample. Cap the bottle. It's been labeled into the cooler with the chain of custody documents. Now, if this was a river and you got moving water, I would likely want to sample up and away from myself to again to minimize contamination. Okay? Questions? Any situation you guys have run into where this poses a problem? Again, three really three things: safety, representativeness, and documentation. Would you definitely want to try to get into the middle where the water is flowing? I would get in the middle. A lot of times we'll use a pole in those situations to get out in the middle. So you want, again, you want to, that water's been sitting there and it's probably not representative of what's in that river or that creek right now. So I'm going to go to where I think the, it's going to give me the best shot at measuring what's truly in that water. And stagnant water's been sitting there for a while. Who knows what's been going on with that? So, any other questions? All right, and it's nice to do this when it's not raining out. 